On the western edge of Europe lies a modern capital city, and in the beating heart of this city is Ireland's highest-ranking university, Trinity College Dublin. Trinity is a modern, living, breathing campus, pulsing with people, energy and ideas. It's made an indelible mark on Ireland and the world for more than four centuries, but its 21st century incarnation has its focus firmly fixed on the future. Today, Trinity's campus is Ireland's largest research centre, a place where leading experts from the humanities, the sciences and medicine are creating research that matters and then turning that research into impact. Thousands of new students pass through Trinity's gates for the very first time every September. They join a community of 3,000 staff, 17,000 students and alumni more than 130,000 strong. A community that is inclusive and welcoming and active in every corner of the globe. A community that will bring out the best in each student and help those students to make their way in life. Our students are all different, but they share one characteristic. They have never been content to accept life as they find it. They agitate. They innovate. They build new worlds. Perhaps this is why Trinity has produced one-fifth of all Irish spin-outs, more entrepreneurs than any other university in Europe, and more than half of all the Nobel laureates from the Republic of Ireland. Perhaps this is why Trinity collaborates so well with the Irish and multinational companies that make Dublin their home. Perhaps this is why Trinity has changed with every generation, and why Trinity never sits still. Perhaps this is why one of the world's great cities is home to one of the world's great universities. Trinity College Dublin. This is Antonio de Linares from the Trinity Global Relations Office. Many thanks for taking the, the time to learn about the School of Law of, of Trinity. I have to say that we have actually people now at the moment from more than 30 countries, people from the US, Canada, Brazil, Ukraine, India, China, Turkey, Germany, South Africa, and almost everything in between. As I'm sure you are all aware, Ireland has become the, they call it the Silicon Valley of Europe in the last 30 years. It's the home of most of the biggest multinationals in the world that they have the headquarters for Europe in here. We are talking about the IT sector, we are talking about pharmaceutical companies, as well as medical devices, banking services, and even more at the moment they are, they, they are coming since last year, Ireland became the only or the main English-speaking country in the European Union. Ireland has a reputation of being extremely friendly. And this reputation is actually reflected as well in the, in the policies. For instance, for those of you that are listening that you are not part of the European Union, you, when you graduate in a master program, in a postgraduate program in Ireland, automatically you are entitled to have two years stay back visa. So you can look for a, for a job. You can decide to do it or not to do it, but the country is telling you, you are welcome. Indeed, if you are doing it, uh, that will open a lot of opportunities for you, particularly if you are a graduate from one of the oldest, um, most prestigious school of law in the world, the School of Law of Trinity College Dublin. Before starting with the, the agenda properly about the School of Law, where we will have the introduction to the school by Professor Diodra Hearn, through the, all the LLM programs by Professor Desmond Ryan, and to the MSc Law and Finance by Professor Alessandro Sertakis, and also some student experience, we will uh, tell you a little bit about the housekeeping of this uh, presentation, together with a, in, a small introduction for the global relations teams that we are here to support you uh, students from wherever you are listening to and um, see this presentation from now. Damian Farrell is one of my colleagues. He actually looks after students coming from the US with his team. Hello, Damian. Thanks, Antonio. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Damian O'Farrell. I look after uh, the Americas at Trinity College Dublin. 
Um, as you can see, that's the agenda that Antonio has went over. We do have some housekeeping, but most of you guys are very good. You've already turned off your cameras, you've muted yourselves, so that's excellent. During the course of the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat and we have a team that will respond to you during the chat function. So any questions that come up during the presentation, just pop that into the chat and we'll be happy to follow up with you. This is the Global Relations uh, Student Recruitment Team at Trinity College. Um, you may already be in contact with some of these people from around the world. Uh, we have Nilangela Ronan in India, Dominique looks after Eastern Europe, Central, uh, uh, Central and East Asia. Antonio, as you met, just looks after the MENA region. I look after the Americas. Uh, Kim Boy looks after Southeast DJ and the Oceania. And then we have Durbel and Govnet that look after the EU. So any EU students, you can contact those guys. Also, we have a live chat function uh, on our website where you can chat with current students and you can chat with staff. And we've also got some scholarship opportunities for you as well, postgraduate scholarship opportunities. And you can find all that information on the Global Relations Study link. And one of our colleagues will post that now in the chat as well, so you'll be able to find all that information. But without further ado, I will turn it over to Professor Hearn, who will take you through um, the law school. Introduction to the School of Law as the Director of Postgraduate Teaching and Learning. I'm a former corporate lawyer myself and now a full-time academic. So I'd like to give you uh, an introduction uh, just to the programs. So the School of Law, um, well, you would have seen in that lovely video, uh, some of the very current and up-to-date things that Trinity is up to and how it's so relevant in today's uh, tech world. But let's just take you back for a moment to the fact that Trinity has a long foundation that stretches back to uh, 1592 when it was founded by Queen Elizabeth I along the model of the Oxford and Cambridge Colleges. It is the highest ranked university in Ireland um, and it's the same in relation to the law school as well. The law school isn't quite as old, um, but it's still, you know, it's nearly at four centuries. It was founded in 1740 and is, is the oldest law school in Ireland, as is Trinity College Dublin. It is, as I said, a leading school, and I think anyone who, who works there or has been a student um, knows that it has a really, really strong um, community of scholars and students and alumni. And we're proud to say that we have a really strong uh, network of graduates of alumni around the world who continue to contribute and be part of the wider Trinity community. So moving on then to think about the, the School of Law itself, um, I'd like you just to know how vibrant the community is if you decide to come and join us. Uh, we have a whole host of international collaborations research projects that staff are engaged in and some uh, research groups as well uh, that, that span a range of topics. So from constitutional governance uh, to crime and punishment, technologies, law and society and um, corporate law, for example. And these include also uh, PhD students and others who are researching in the area, including postdoctoral students. There are also um, a wide range of funded research projects uh, that have, you know, that show the caliber of the staff that are working in, in the university by virtue of the funding that they have attracted. Um, and these academic staff who, who form the core of the teaching uh, staff for the master's programs we offer have published widely in both national um, and international um, publication houses of repute and published monographs and uh, articles that many of you will actually get a chance to read. Um, so I think it is a real privilege and people always emphasize that to come uh, to be thought in Trinity because of the caliber of the staff who are world renowned. Okay, so just to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, as it may be of interest to you, we have uh, the Trinity Center for Constitutional Law and Governance which is uh, headed by uh, Professor Aileen Kavna, who is our Chair of Constitutional uh, Governance. And that's um, also many students are involved in that too. Um, and it, it has a really vibrant uh, set of talks and research that's ongoing. Also, since COVID-19 has joined us, there are some positive things. We have a great COVID-19 Law and Human Rights Observatory. And you should take a look at our blog which has a range of fascinating posts on all aspects of the law relating to 
um, the COVID-19 and indeed a policy report as well. And we've contributed to public debate, including in our parliament uh, on, on policy issues to do with COVID-19. So that just shows the public policy interface that we also have. Uh, we're not just academics, we also contribute to debate and policy formation. Uh, the, the School of Law is also home to a European Research Council multi-million uh, funded project under Professor Mary Rogan, uh, which relates to uh, inspections in, in, uh, in prisons and uh, has a, a range of, of postgraduate and postdoctoral researchers uh, that has attracted a lot of attention as well as, as a very cutting edge and worthwhile project. We also are home to the Irish Centre for European Law uh, which has long been uh, studying the effect of membership of the European Union and its law and policies. We are home to two journals, uh, peer review journals that are, are well regarded, the Dublin University Law Journal and the Irish Supreme Court Review. I think what might be really relevant that I'd like to really share from the heart to you is how how much we in the law school place store on there being a really strong relationship between our staff and our student body in both the undergraduate and the postgraduate population. I have been teaching on the LLM for many years and I'm proud to say that when I teach in my classes on the LLM, I know everyone by name and we have that those kind of discussions in the class where everybody gets to know each other and it's a really strong feeling of a, a close contact and a close relationship of professional respect and sharing of views uh, in an inclusive environment. And uh, that, you know, I think that really does mark out the law school in Trinity as different from other places. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've also been someone who's been an undergraduate uh, many years ago back in Trinity, but it's also a reason why many of the staff in Trinity have come back to work there who were students there. Uh, because they, they understand the very special environment that we have. We are home to many undergraduate students and postgraduate students, and you can see the numbers here. And in fact, they've probably grown since that slide uh, ha even has, has been made. Um, we, we have a really, um, we, we have a you know, really strong level of interest in our programs. And although we have 160 postgraduate thought students, we could fill those places many times over. But you know, we're always happy to, to accept students of the right caliber to our programs uh, if, if, if they apply to us. Um, a recent development of which we're suitably proud is that the law school was uh, in last year was awarded a um, Athena Swan Bronze Award. It's the only school uh, of law in the whole island of Ireland to have, or in the south of Ireland, to have been awarded the um, uh, the Athena Swan Award, which is, is something that marks a quality mark for gender equality, diversity and inclusion in the practices that are of, of inherent in the school and its culture and staff. And that culture of, of inclusion is something I'd really like to emphasize to you as part of the way we do things. It's a friendly place, it's welcoming to people from everywhere, from every background, nationality and, and anything else that you might like to think about. So it's it is, a, you know, it's a faculty and it's a student body which comes from many countries and that's also why I'm very excited to see so many countries um, in the registration list for today and so many of you indeed sending your messages in the chat to say where, where you're coming from as well. Um, so we, we do welcome diversity and we always welcome even more diversity so we're happy to see uh, so much interest uh, in, in our programmes. Okay, so um, we have a number of talk uh, postgraduate programs that my colleagues, um, Professor Desmond Ryan, um, who's head of the LLM and director of the LLM programs, will elaborate on, and indeed Professor Alexandra Seratakis, who's director of the MSc in Law and Finance, will elaborate on in more detail. But just to say, uh, we you know we started off with a with a general uh, LLM or master's degree, which allows scope to, you know, to to cover a wide range of different modules of if you're interested in a broad range of topics. But if you'd like to be more specialised, there are options to choose uh, certain uh, subject areas that you can then have in your you know you can market yourself as having a more specialised master's or LLM in uh, international and comparative law for example, which focuses in on law in a globalized context. 
Um, similarly, if you want to really uh, kind of show that you're, you're interested in, in the business law side, you might choose the International and European Business Law, LLM. We've also had a very uh, keen interest, um, it's fair to say, in um, the third one here, the LLM, the Intellectual Property and Information Technology Law, which understandably there's a growing interest in. And that also ties in with our very close links to the technologies industry in Dublin. Uh, you saw in the video yourself how, you know, we're home to the headquarters of, of Google and Facebook and many more. Um, we have, you know, so many uh, things happening like digital banking revolution has just opened in Ireland and, uh, and others. So that has been a really uh, strong area. In 2019, we established a new MSc in Law and Finance, which I'm really excited about because it's a, a joint program, an interdisciplinary program with the Trinity Business School. And it's a really cutting edge program that offers uh, students um, from law, business and economics backgrounds the opportunity to really get in depth into law and finance and to, to, to have that a really uh, amazing opportunity to, to benefit from both law and business disciplines. I'm going to have to, to say I, I can't say too much more about these because I will take the words that are going to be belonging to my colleagues who are the directors of those programs. But I'd just like to say that um, it's a pleasure to be here today and I hope we'll be able to answer as many questions as possible. And do feel free to contact us if you have further questions afterwards. Um, and you know it, we'd be very happy to welcome you um, as students at the Law School of Trinity College Dublin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ahern. Welcome everybody. My name is Desmond Ryan and I'm the director of the LLM programmes. I echo the words of Professor Ahern in just welcoming you here today. And I'm delighted to speak now about the different programmes that we offer uh, on the uh, uh, range of LLM courses. So just to say a little bit, first of all, about the structure of the LLM programmes. To note first that this programme is a full-time uh, academic programme of one year's duration. And students on the programme take three modules in each semester. There are two semesters, so that's a total of six modules from a very wide range of choices of specialist subject areas. There are over 40, indeed, of these uh, modules taught by full-time professors and adjunct expert practitioners. And I think that's a very important point for you to note as prospective students on the LLM programme. One of the many strengths of our programme is that we have the expertise from members of the legal professions, the bar, solicitors firms, those who have much experience of um, the world of legal practice and other related areas who give up their time still to uh, participate in our programmes in terms of their lecturing. In addition to this, uh, all students on the LLM complete a research dissertation. And this is a substantial feature of the programme. Just so you're clear, this is a core component. Uh, it is a compulsory requirement and students frequently observe having graduated from the programme that the opportunity to do this research dissertation was a real highlight of their development as graduate students. It means you can, if you like, make of your own uh, um, a, a key cutting edge legal area and produce a very substantial piece of independent uh, research, which of course is hugely valuable to you uh, in terms of whether it's future publication or demonstrating to an employer your ability to produce high level quality assured work that is the result of your independent research. So just to say a little bit then, uh, about the dissertation. It's on an approved theme, which you yourself can choose. Um, it's a, a thematic um, uh, dissertation group system that we have here in Trinity, which means that your students are grouped into small groups based on the uh, specific topic you have chosen. And in those groups, you develop research and writing skills, 
presentation skills and peer-to-peer -peer review and learning capabilities. In terms of the various programs that Professor Ahern mentioned a, a few moments ago, I'll just briefly speak to each of the different programs we offer so that you can decide which of the programs is the right fit for you. First of all, we have our flagship general LLM program. That's the oldest of our programs. And it, that's a very good choice for students who wish to take their legal studies to the next level at graduate study, but don't wish yet to commit to one very specialized niche area. So if, if that's the situation that you are in, then the LLM general is probably going to be the most suitable uh, of the courses for you. This course gives you the flexibility of sampling different legal areas, everything from international human rights to data protection to um, the more commercial subjects and so on. Um, so, uh, as I say there, there's a substantial list of modules covering the disparate branches of law. And this enables you to broaden and deepen your knowledge of the law. But it's important to say as well, albeit that it is a general LLM, it's still pitched at the appropriately high graduate level. And it, of course, allows you, um, particularly in your dissertation, to develop a specialization and to, with the dissertation, choose the particular area you would like to focus on. So that's the LLM general. Turning now to the more specific LLM that, that are more tailored to particular subjects, first up here is the LLM in International and Comparative Law. This program was designed for students who wish to develop an in-depth understanding of law in an international and global context. It's key point really is the development of comparative legal research um, uh, skills, which are exactly the skills that are required for the evolving social, cultural and international environment in which we find ourselves. And again, on this program, there's a diverse range of modules, again, taught by academic experts and practitioners, such as international humanitarian law, Islamic law, business and human rights, just to name a few. The next of the um, programmes is the LLM in International and European Business Law. This programme is designed for graduates who are preparing to work in international commercial firms or legal practice across the globe. So the emphasis is very much on the international and the European dimensions of business law. And here again, students will develop skills to critically analyse the interplay or the, the relationship between law and social change within international and business law. And some examples of the modules on this programme can include corporate governance, international economic and trade law, and mergers and acquisitions. The next of the programmes is the LLM in Intellectual Property and Information Technology Laws, one of the sort of most topical um, um, matches in terms of the, the um, subjects that are uh, on offer here. The programme covers the substantive policy and practical elements of intellectual property and information technology law, and again does this within both a European and an international context. And again, the knowledge economy and developing skills in relation to this evolving uh, framework uh, is really the focus of this programme. Some of the specialised modules here include data protection, regulation of cyber speech and cyber security, and copyright law and patent law. And as you can see from that list, these are modules which have a, a global resonance and a global significance. So moving on then to uh, having identified the programmes, my colleague Professor Sarah Takis will speak in a few moments about the MSC programme that uh, Professor Ahern mentioned, but just to speak a little more about student activities, student societies. There is a wide range of societies that are open to you as students and they, some of them focus on, on law related activities such as the Law Society of the University, European Law Students Association, the Free Legal Advice Centre. There's also a flagship colloquial 
colloquium event at which many LLM students are very involved, which is an opportunity to organize a conference and present your work in conjunction with other colleagues and the highly esteemed Trinity College Law Review, an opportunity to get involved in the publication uh, of articles and possibly even submitting your own article to that review as many LLM students and graduates have done. Moving on then to scholarship opportunities, these are set out in the um, slide here, so I won't particularise all of the scholarship uh, opportunities now, but just to flag for you that there are a number of opportunities for funded um, scholarships available and there are more details available on these different scholarships uh, on the relevant um, website pages. To turn then to um, postgraduate students um, opportunities to avail of external scholarships. So um, postgraduate taught students can apply for externally offered scholarships subject to, again, particular eligibility. Uh, and there are various um, uh, conditions attached to each of those. And I'll give you the link there for the information on those scholarships. So do have a look. In terms of internships and prizes, there are a number of these distinctions that are connected to our programmes. And again, this will give you a flavour of um, the type of um, recognition that is attached to our programmes uh, and the uh, external imprimatur they receive in terms of these uh, internship uh, and prize opportunities for students. Turning then to careers, the Careers Advisory Service provides a wide range of resources to help you make informed choices about your future career direction. And amongst the different opportunities are one-to-one -one meetings with a careers consultant, CV, CV and interview clinics, seminars and workshops, and employer presentations. And as Professor O'Hearn mentioned, one of the benefits of the Trinity Law School is that it is a friendly and personal setting where we do get to know students on an individual basis. As the director of the programmes, I'm frequently asked to write references for students, which I'm delighted to do, which assists students in their employability and in making various applications. So we're very committed as well to your career development and employability as graduates of the programme. And our fellow uh, our graduates follow a wide variety of career paths globally. Um, we give a, a sample there of career destinations which have been reported to us by our graduates in recent years. And you can see a real smorgasbord of career opportunities uh, and uh, future directions of our graduates. It, it isn't simply the, the narrow um, pathway of working in a law firm, although many do that with great distinction. Um, there's a whole range of other opportunities in legal and related sectors that our graduates pursue each year. Some student testimonials. I know we have Lucia who's going to speak to us shortly about her experience as a graduate, so I won't um, dwell on these now, just to say that the uh, responses from students in evaluations which we conduct uh, throughout the year and then at the end of the programme are uniformly overwhelmingly positive and um, the student testimonials then give you that direct feedback from those um, very close to your current position as to what their experience um, uh, has been. In terms of admissions, there are various details here um, which you can get in, in more um, particulars on the website. But the most important point I'd like you to know is that um, our applications are accepted uh, on a uh, rolling basis. So even though there's a deadline of the 31st of May, do apply early um, because uh, we consider and process applications as they come in and therefore we, we do encourage early application and there's a list of um, frequently asked questions which is available at the link on the slide before you. The application process in terms of just some points of guidance I would emphasize the importance of completing the application form carefully and uploading all of the necessary documentation that is set out there um, and please note the importance there of the uh, certification of the relevant academic documents, the two academic references and um, the CV, and of course, to note the English language competency if English is not your first language. 
I'm going to conclude there and hand over to my colleague, Professor Sarah Takis. So just to thank you for your attention and I'll be delighted to take any questions you might have. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Desmond. Uh, so uh, hello all, thank you for uh, uh, being here. So I'm basically uh, gonna uh, give you a presentation on the MSc in Law and Finance, where I serve as a, a director. Uh, so uh, the MSc in Law and Finance program is a new program. Um, um, it was uh, introduced, uh, it was launched in 2019. So uh, it's only the second year of the program. So, and it's basically a, a, a program which is um, uh, run jointly by the School of Law and Trinity Business School. So, and, and just to give you uh, a bit of a background of why uh, we basically decided uh, to introduce this program. So, right, you heard uh, everything that um, especially uh, Desmond has had to say about our other NLM programs. So, for instance, we have an LLM. Uh, in international uh, business law. So, and why did we decide to launch uh, such, uh, a more advanced program, a, a more specialized program? So uh, it's because basically we realized that interdisciplinary study at the postgraduate level is widely recognized as a highly desirable attribute for employers. So law and finance as fields are, uh, are linked and they're crucial areas in any business environment. So in, in today's uh, complex business world, uh, lawyers uh, will have to become um, accustomed with business with finance concepts. And, and on the opposite side, even uh, uh, business profession, finance professionals, people working at banks, they, will all, they're, they, they are also asked to have uh, a basic knowledge of the law, of the legal regulations touching upon finance. So, and that's basically uh, the, the whole idea behind introducing this program. The program will give students access to academic and expert practitioners in both disciplines. So students will uh, basically, take course, basically take courses in both the law school, pure law, pure legal studies. And then they also take courses at the business school, pure business, pure finance uh, courses. So uh, who is this, uh, you know, what's the target audience of the program? So the target audience, uh, the uh, prospective students are basically law graduates uh, um, uh, who are willing or are already working in corporate law, corporate finance, funds, securities regulation and financial regulation. So that's the, uh, um, um, the first target group of the program. And the second uh, target group is basically finance and business uh, graduates who are already working or are seeking employ employment within the financial services industry, including corporate finance, banking, asset management, and regulation. And a lot of, uh, it just I wanted to, um, uh, to note something, uh, a lot of students, a lot of prospective students basically ask us whether the program is mostly geared towards lawyers, right? You would think uh, we give a presentation about the School of Law and I'm telling you all these things about law and finance, so maybe you would naturally think that this is mostly a program for just lawyers who just want to, um, uh, who just want to expand their knowledge in finance. But uh, during these two years of the program, what we saw is that the uh, student class is basically uh, uh, is basically fifty fifty. So fifty percent of our student class are are um, uh, law graduates, and fifty percent are uh, finance and business graduates. So it's not a program which is um, which targets solely. Uh, um, law graduate. It's a program which also targets finance and business graduates. So, uh, what are the uh, what are the aims of the program? Uh, the aims of the program are basically to provide students with the knowledge to operate across both law and financial services. Uh, to provide students with the capacity to embrace current and future changes uh, in areas such as financial regulation, EU law, and financial innovation. For instance, we've just introduced a course on uh, fintech. And to ensure that graduates obtain skills to tackle business challenges with an understanding of both the legal and financial aspects. So, and, and what is the uh, structure of the program? As I mentioned to you, uh, it, it's a program in law and finance. 
So, and we're, I'm going to discuss um, uh, later on the, uh, the courses that are offered from the uh, law school and the courses that are offered from the business school. So, the program has basically uh, um, 90 ECTS credits. So, the mandatory modules of the program, uh, these are modules that all the students have to take, they're mandatory, uh, and they basically aim to give you a, a broad, an overall broad knowledge, a broad perspective of uh, the field of law and finance. There were 30 CTS credits. And then we also have 30 CTS credits of elective modules. So it's modules that um, uh, we offer a wide variety of modules and, it, uh, and, there, and from there you can pick uh, which modules you wanna uh, follow. And then another 30 ECTS credits uh, is basically the uh, research dissertation in law or finance. So I just want to note here that uh, with respect to research dissertation, you can uh, 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 basically a student can choose whether to complete a dissertation at the law school, which is going to be a dissertation um, uh, in a uh, legal topic, or at the business school, which is going to be a dissertation uh, relating to uh, uh, some uh, business or finance topic. And what we saw during the previous year is that it doesn't have to be that a law graduate will uh, uh, will necessarily have to take a dissertation at the, at the law school. Uh, what I saw during the years is that uh, a lot of, for instance, um, uh, law students, uh, uh, law graduates who were who enrolled in the program, they basically decided uh, to do their dissertation at the business school. And conversely, uh, business graduates decided to do their dissertation at the law school. So, and as I mentioned, the mandatory modules, uh, right, just to give you a bit of a, um, 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 more information about the mandatory modules, the mandatory modules allow students to master the fundamentals of law and finance. The mandatory modules may include um, courses such as business ethics, uh, right, a very important topic in today's world, corporate finance, how corporations raise money, uh, how do they issue bonds in the markets, how do they issue shares, Corporate finance and corporate governance, EU financial services law, discussing, uh, right, uh, that's a, um, a, a, legal, a legal course discussing all the regulations that have been introduced at the EU level. And then investment theory, uh, that's a, a, a very useful, for instance, finance, finance course. How do you uh, write, what is the theory behind uh, making investments? Uh, and then, uh, the, uh, the other category of course are the elective courses, which basically allow you to specialize uh, further in certain fields. So in our elective modules uh, come both from, um, um, uh, you know, you can pick elective modules both at the law school and at the business school. So they may include business and human rights, econometrics, uh, very hardcore uh, economics and finance course, financial markets and institutions, uh, law and risk, mergers and acquisitions, and uh, uh, private equity and venture capital. For instance, uh, uh, right, venture capital is a very popular uh, topic, um, uh, especially in Ireland where you have all these tech companies and all these startups, how do they raise money? So that's a course uh, that would be potentially of interest to young uh, graduates. And then we also uh, have introduced a course on FinTech regulation offered by the law school. So uh, with respect to the uh, um, research dissertation, so students will complete a dissertation under the guidance of academic leaders at the School of Law or Trinity Business School. I mentioned to you uh, that you can uh, decide where you, uh, you're willing, uh, in which field you're willing to take your dissertation. And the research dissertation, the whole aim is to enable you to undertake an in-depth individual research study of a particular issue within the field of law or finance. And it basically a research dissertation allows students to apply the techniques and knowledge acquired from their modules to a problem of real world academic or managerial concern. So scholarship opportunities. So uh, we're delighted that we'll be, uh, we're able to offer uh, basically two MSc law and finance scholarship for academic year 2021-2022. They're open to both EU or, and non-EU students. It's a 5,000 euro contribution towards your tuition fees. It's awarded solely on the basis of uh, academic um, uh, merit. And the application guidelines in the application form are available on the School of Law website. 
So, and of course, uh, uh, when you hear such a uh, uh, you know such a title, I'm seeing law and finance and a problem uh, and a program which has to do with uh, right the business world. Of course, I guess uh, a lot of prospective students uh, are interested in hearing about uh, career options. So, as I mentioned to you, it's the uh, second year of the of the program, and we have been um, uh, and our graduates have already uh, been. Are uh, very successful in uh, their um, um, in their job applications. So our graduates will basically follow a wide variety of career paths globally. So uh, you combine, as I mentioned to you, the program combines both law and finance. So naturally, uh, it opens more paths from for someone. Uh, it's not strictly law, uh, but you can. Uh, it's not uh, strictly the law firms that can be your um, um, target. Uh, it can be banks, it can be uh, funds, it can be, um, um, uh, it can be also academia. And here you can find a sample of career destination reported by graduates in the inaugural year of the program. Some of our graduates have decided to, uh, to pursue a PhD. Uh, they're willing to um, enter academia. Uh, paralegal, uh, other uh, graduates have become paralegals. Other graduates have um, uh, become governance and investment interns tax trainees, of course, trainee solicitors at law firms, uh, strategic and develop and business development interns, business data and financial analysts, capital investment managers, and company secretaries. And some, um, uh, right, and as I mentioned to you, the program, uh, our graduates have been uh, pretty successful in the first year of the program. So uh, they were able to land jobs at very uh, uh, prestigious companies. So uh, some of the companies that our uh, graduates have uh, basically found employment in uh, include names such as uh, Wright McKinsey and Company, uh, McCann Fitzgerald, a very uh, prestigious law firm in Ireland, Mazars, uh, a very big uh, consulting firm, Flipdis, a very uh, successful uh, startup in Ireland, KPMG, Ernst & Young, the accounting firms, Matheson, a law firm, Grant, uh, Grant Thornton, so as you can see, right, the class of 2020 career destinations are some of the, um, uh, are some of the uh, uh, most prestigious employers in the world. So student testimonials, um, uh, I can uh, guarantee to you that um, uh, during the inaugural year of our program and even this year, uh, our students have been only positive towards uh, the program, their experience. Of course, COVID have made has made things uh, more difficult, but it has made things more difficult for everyone. But students have been uh, overwhelmingly positive um, in uh, their experience at, at the law school, at the business school, at the structure of the program. And, and uh, right, and as uh, Desmond mentioned before, you can also, I'm not willing to go into detail into all this, but you can uh, see some students' that's testimonials on our website. Now, with respect to admissions, our applications are invited from graduates who hold an undergraduate's bachelor's degree of two to one grade or higher in law, business, or economics. These are the three disciplines uh, that we accept students from. This is, of course, only the starting points for admissions to this highly subscribed program, and we're going to also take other criteria uh, in mind. Uh, um, the application deadline is the 31st of May 2020, and early application is encouraged. So, and if you have, uh, um, that was uh, a general presentation, and if you have any other inquiries relating to the program, please don't hesitate to, um, uh, to contact Kelly, who's the, um, uh, who, is, who is our administrator. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll leave the floor now to Lucia to discuss this student experience at Trinity. Thank you, Professor Seretakis. Hello, everyone. My name is Lucia, and I'm here today because I have a story I'd love to share with you, my experience as LLM student at Trinity. And why you should listen to me today, because I think it is important you know exactly what does it mean finding a place where you can flourish personally and professionally. 
Well, let's start uh, saying that I come from Salerno, which is a little city in south of Italy, one hour away from Naples. Uh, you may know Naples because it's a place where pizza was born, actually. And I was living my life as a lawyer and as a geek uh, because I am extremely passionate about technology stuff. When I decided to, uh, that I wanted to, to study further and deeper uh, the technology from a legal perspective. And because I wanted also to step out from my comfort zone, I wanted to know a world totally different from mine. Um, I think we agree upon the fact that as students, when we choose a university, uh, there can be so many personal decision behind it, but from my own experience, I decided that Trinity was for me by one thing. I wanted to be where great people had been before me and get the chance to learn more. So I decided to undertake my LLM in information technology and intellectual property law at Trinity. And I must be totally honest with you today. I think this is I consider this decision maybe one of the best decisions I've made in my life so far. And the proof is that I'm here to, to share my experience with you today. Uh, I actually hadn't been in Dublin before my LLM, but I discovered this beautiful city with a great vibe, so many friendly people who are really uh, willing to help you out which is uh, absolutely one of the best things, especially when you come from abroad, am I right? And I remember every day spent studying at Trinity was an experience to me. I was looking forward to jump out of the bed because there was a class that day. And this is what we call motivation actually. And I undertook so uh, many great models uh, during my LLM. Uh, covering all the most important aspects of IT and IP law. And of course, I got the chance to, to, to meet so many uh, people, so many peers that we are still friends today. And um, actually it can be difficult to me to express my feelings on what Trinity means, what Trinity represents to me, because I think I found at Trinity more than a community. I found a family far from home, especially because I think Trinity gave me the chance to find, um, to find myself, to study and engage with so many student societies. I think should be uh, up to a hundred uh, student societies in Trinity. I got the chance to, to meet so many people from all over the world and uh, it gave me new personal and professional perspectives, and I'm sure it will be for you as well. So if, if you're looking for an engaging, inspiring environment in which you can study, you can create your own personal and professional path, then I can say uh, without doubt that come here, come to Trinity and see with your own eyes what does it mean being part of something bigger? What does it mean being part of Trinity family? And I hope to, to, to meet you at Trinity campus soon. Thank you so much. Inspiration has lived here since 1592. And more than 400 years later, it's still going strong. Inspiration has helped burgeoning writers put pen to paper and given world leaders a head start. It has set the stage for budding playwrights and created characters that will never die. For countless actors who started here, inspiration has played a part. Work done in Trinity helped split the atom, battled cancer, and guided man's first giant leap. From here, we've inspired people around the world. But even with this proud history, we are firmly focused on the future. Today we are making new discoveries and inspiring the next generation of history makers.